This tutorial is a follow-on to the previous tutorial that showed how to locate an almost invisible target. We generated a finder image and used a little star chart that we had to locate the target. In this example, we're going to use astrometry.net to place the measuring aperture on the target for us. In this case, I didn't have a star chart available, but I did know the right ascension and declination coordinates of the target star. So let's open the folder that we have been working with. It was this one. Open it, and we'll take a look at our star field. And we know that the target is somewhere in here, but I don't have a star chart, so an enhanced image isn't going to help me. Instead, I'm going to ask astrometry.net to position the measuring aperture for me. So if I click on this button, I first of all I'll get the warning that you have to fill in the pixel height and width in order to continue. Astrometry.net requires square pixels. If you don't have square pixels, it needs to know what the dimensions are. In this case, I know that this probably came from a run cam and it has square pixels. You can enter two equal values here to indicate that it is in fact a square pixel camera. So now we need to enter the RA and deck coordinates. So it's at uh, six hours, 32 minutes, 33.4808 seconds at uh, plus 22 degrees, 27 minutes, 45.923. And I've already filled in my API key for astrometry.net. And it warns us that you really should remove any timestamp overlay because that will interfere possibly with astrometry.net's search. So if I enter 70 and try again, it asks me what your image looks like now, and that is good to go. So down here we can see that we've logged on to astrometry.net and we're waiting for a job number to be assigned. It generally takes about two minutes. And while that's happening, I'm going to open up the finder image. I'm doing this because if astrometry.net finds the target, it's going to pop up an aperture on our screen. And it's very dramatic to have previously located it. In fact, it is right here. And if astrometry.net succeeds, you are going to see an aperture pop up at that point. We're still waiting for job ID. Normally around uh, 12, there it is, we got a job ID. We're waiting for a solution. It usually finds it in one or two seconds, bingo. It has popped up the aperture and it is pixel perfect on our finder image. At this point, we would move to the real image, reset our contrast control so we can see a bit what's going on. And as before, we can't really see our target, but we can continue as we did in the previous video to select a tracking star, select a no star, and to carry out the analysis. And that's the end of this video.